Hello everyone! I wanted to get one more Christmassy video out for you all before the big day, so here's a review of 2017's The Man Who Invented Christmas, a speculative movie about how Charles Dickens got the inspiration to write A Christmas Carol. I've gotta tell ya, I'm always pretty reluctant to watch a movie about a real-life person I'm a fan of, so even though I love Dickens and I love A Christmas Carol, I was not super excited about this movie when it came out last year. Um, I kind of felt like, oh no, how are they going to ruin this one? But I have also kind of wanted to see it anyway. Plus it's been recommended by a couple people, Carolyn from Carolyn's Reading Ramblings, and more recently Ask Me About Dyslexia. So I finally sucked it up and watched it the other night with my parents on Amazon Prime, and I've got to say, you were both right, um, it was much better than I expected. <laughs> It's got a solid supporting cast that includes a number of actors who've done Dickens before. Christopher Plummer was Ralph Nickleby in the 2002 adaptation of Nicholas Nickleby. Jonathan Price played the part of Fagin in the 1994 revival of Oliver, which of course is based on Oliver Twist. Bill Patterson, who has a very small cameo, played Mr. Meagles in the 2007 adaptation of Little Dorrit. Ian McNeese played Fezziwig in the 1999 adaptation of A Christmas Carol. And if Miriam Margulies doesn't have some Dickens in her past, I'm gonna eat my hat. Ooh, there we go! <laughs> but Dan Stevens, as Charles Dickens, is the star, and he does a fine job. This is Dickens between successes. His last few books haven't done so well, and now everyone's secretly, or not so secretly, wondering if his talent has run its course. The pressure to prove everyone wrong, and to make money, is enough to drive any writer crazy, and this portrayal of Dickens is certainly more eccentric than not. Stevens plays the part with a lot of energy and humor. He demonstrates a strong sense of comedic timing, but he also delivers in key emotional scenes. I do have some strong doubts about how much of this movie is based on fact. I'm sure some liberties have been taken. But there are also things that I recognize from having read about Dickens before. Things about his relationship with his father and his wife and his wild American fans. I have no idea if this is an accurate depiction of the circumstances under which A Christmas Carol was written, or how much Dickens really struggled with the ending, or if its completion was a cathartic experience for him. I do feel, though, that even if a lot of the drama was a fabrication, it's still made for an entertaining movie, with many an interesting parallel drawn between the author <coughs> between the author and his main character, Ebenezer Scrooge. Yep, that's staying in. <laughs> While the story does encompass Dickens' chaotic home life, his family's financial turbulence, his struggles with writer's block, his friendships and rivalries, his household struggles with his unpredictability, his difficulties with his father, and his private battle with his past, a good deal of it has a creative recreation of scenes and characters from A Christmas Carol. And if you've ever thought to yourself that Christopher Plummer would make a good Scrooge, here you go. He does do a really good job with it, playing Scrooge with a dry, crispy sense of humor and an understated snarkiness. He doesn't get to do all the things typically required of the role, since this isn't a straight adaptation of A Christmas Carol, but he still gets to hit a lot of the highlights, and I really couldn't complain. And if you're familiar with Dickens' other works, whether from reading his books, or watching adaptations of them, or some of both, like me, then you'll recognize a lot of other references sprinkled here and there. Mostly names. I don't care much for the title of the movie, which comes from the book it's based on by Les Standiford. It's figurative, Dickens didn't invent Christmas, obviously, um, but every time I say it, it just feels a little off. I also got a feeling, especially toward the very end, that they were trying to avoid saying or doing anything overtly religious, lest they risk offending anyone, uh, but while there's not much said about the actual reason we celebrate Christmas, Themes of redemption and regeneration, and love and forgiveness and grace were still prominent. The only thing I really disliked, and disliked is probably too strong a word, was the implication that Dickens barely had any ideas of his own. A lot of the first half of the movie shows Dickens getting inspiration for characters and names and lines, which is something you'll get a kick out of if you recognize them, and if you've seen at least one version of A Christmas Carol, you will recognize these things. But at one point, it did cross my mind that it was making Dickens look like a talentless hack who stole the bulk of his material from other people. 
And I wasn't the only one. My parents thought the same thing. The movie did ease up on that after the halfway point, though, once Dickens got down to the actual writing of A Christmas Carol, and I especially liked the scene where he tries to find the right name for his main character, and he's experimenting out loud with different sounds and syllables. Once he hits on the right name, Scrooge, the character is able to appear. Literally. I've mentioned before how much I enjoy it when a movie shows a writer interacting with a fictional character. It adds such a fun, fantastical element to see these individuals inhabiting each other's worlds. Plus, it gives a new twist to a story that we've seen played out a dozen times before. And it's a lot of fun to see how Scrooge interacts with Dickens here. So this was a really nice movie. Funny, feel good, at times a little sad, in true Dickens fashion. It isn't really Dickens if it isn't both funny and emotional. So I'd recommend checking it out if you haven't seen it already. I have managed to watch a couple other Christmassy things this month, and hopefully I can squeeze in a few more, but I guess you'll have to wait until January to hear about them. This is hopefully not my last video before Christmas, but in case a Godzilla review isn't exactly your cup of tea, I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas, and as always, thank you so much for watching.